Hey YouTube, one question I often get a lot um, is, do IVs matter? If they do matter, which one should I run? Does it matter if I do like the zero attack versus three attack versus like the hundo, stuff like that. So what we're gonna do in this video is we are gonna go over, do IVs matter? And if so, when do they matter? But before we can even get into do IVs matter, we have to talk about how to calculate um, why, why IVs are actually, what are they used for? Let's just start with that. So when you appraise a Pokemon, you are given three, um, three numbers there, zero to 15. And those are for attack, the first one, defense and stamina. So you'll get a number from zero to 15 for each of these attack, defense, stamina. Let's just get up. Let's just get the easiest one off the bat. For Master League, you would, you ideally want the hundo 15, 15, 15 across the board. That will give you the maximum um, CP. And we'll talk about the calculation in one second. The question is, can you do a non-hundo for Master League? Yes, if you're going to do a non-hundo for Master League, do it so it is uh, one of the second two that are the second, the defense or the stamina that isn't a 15. You really, you kind of need the 15 attack because it, it, it's important for like CMPs and stuff like that. Charge move priority. Okay, so you're given these numbers, 0 to 15 for attack, defense, stamina. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because that those numbers affect the calculation of a Pokemon's CP. And what the CP is important for is those are the numbers that are used for identifying which Pokemon can play in various leagues. So in the Little Cup, it's a 500 CP. In the Great League, it's a 1500 CP. The Ultra League is a 2500 CP and the Master League is open. So what, so why, why does it matter? So it matters because the calculation for CP includes the, the attack and the IV, the, the defense and the IV and the stamina and IV. So what they mean, first of all, what do they mean by base attack? Let's just open up a uh, people poke here so we can see. So when they say your base statistics, it's just um, this, this, the base stacks that come up here for the Pokemon itself. So just giving you an example, Medi, 106 attack, 139 defense, 141 stamina. Um, if you go Swampert, something's a little more attack heavy, 122 attack, 108 defense, 135 stamina, right? So a little less there. And then if you go for like a glass cannon, like Surfetched, 145 attack. So huge attack Pokemon, uh, but very, very low on the defense and stamina, 107, 98. 98. So those are your sort of base stats. Um, those are your base stats in this formula. And then you have to add on your IVs. So that zero to 15 there, um, you have to add that on. And then you're, you're gonna multiply it by CP multiplier. And I'll talk about that in one second. So, but CP multiplier is a constant value that depends on your Pokemon's level. Um, and I will just show you that quickly in one second after this. But why does it matter? Look at the CP formula to calculate the CP. So it equals A, which is the one with the base attack, um, multiplied by B, but to the exponent of 0.5, multiply by C the exponent of 0.5, multiply the CP multiplier to exponent of 0.2 divided by 10. So it's a very somewhat complicated formula, but here is the main thing you need to realize. Your, your defense and your stamina are basically chopped in half, multiplied by 0.5. But your A, your base attack and IV attack is not. So overall, the, when you're doing the CP calculation, your attack uh, has a higher weight in the CP calculation than your defense and stamina. So that is why you you often hear go with the lower attack, go with like a zero attack and 15 defense and 15 stamina, because um, when you're doing this big calculation, the defense and stamina can count for less, so you can have the higher defense and stamina there, um, and you will have a low you're trying to get as low as an attack as you can because it inf it informs your cp calculation and why this matters is uh so let, actually let me do the multiplier and then i'll say why why who cares who cares if i have a higher attack here and i'll show you why that matters it matters for the levels of the pokemon um so this multiplier that they're talking about um so here's the multiplier on the screen this only goes to level 40. Level 40 to 50 is probably even less of a multiplier, but here's what you need to consider. So 1 to 10 is just the baby one. I'm going to ignore that because any any Pokemon that you're really using is probably going to start at minimum level 10, even in, even in the little cup. 
So it, from level 10 to 20, your sort of multiplier that you, you multiply it by is 0 0.008911. One. And then for 20 to 30, it's 0 0.008921. And then when you go to 30 to 40, it's 0 0.0044. Um, and for 40 to 50, it's actually even less. So what this is CP gain per power up. So what that's basically saying, because the multiplier is lower from 30 to 40, and it's gonna be even lower from 40 to 50, basically for each power up, your CP gain is less the higher your Pokemon level. And we see that a lot in like Master League. If you had level 40 Pokemon and you're going to level 50, well, that CP difference is not as big as it would be from, from like 30 to 40 and from like 20 to 30, right? So it's just saying that the higher your Pokemon level, the, the slower the CP gain powering up, which also comes into play when you're now powering up Pokemon to like level 40, 45, 50 in the Great League and Ultra League, because that you're not getting as much CP gain, which actually allows you to get more levels, and that affects the overall level of the Pokemon. So why does the level of the Pokemon matter? And let me show you um, some calculations here about how you would use different IVs to affect a Pokemon's ability. So I am going to go with Swampert as an example. So in Swampert, let's just say you have a Hundo Swampert, okay? 15, 15, 15. That is a level 17.5 level in the Great League, rank 1261. Let's say you have like, okay, you don't have a Hundo, you don't have the best for Great League, but you have like an okay one at like, look at these, are, this is perfect. Let's just do this, 6, 14, 15, 14. This is original IVs. So this is just kind of what PB Pokes base setting it. So this is like, it's not the best, it's not the worst. So 6, 14, 13, 118th ranked. Uh, perfect, and then we will go here and we will put in a Swampert and we will maximize it. We'll say, give me the best ranked Pokemon. So 0, 14, 14. So there's two things that you need to consider here. The difference between having a Hundo and having the optimal rank is 1.5 levels. And what does that matter? So just take a look at these numbers. 124 attack, but only 106 defense and 134 stamina. Whereas if you go to the to the best ranked, you have a 121 attack, which is much left, much less, but a 110 and a 139 stamina, which is higher. So you're going to lose the attack stat, which is where you're going to lose CMP. You often hear about charge move priority. You're going to lose CMP, but you're going to have a higher defense and stamina. And because the attack uh, factors in more into the CP, that is why your Hundo Swapper only gets to level 17.5, and this one gets to 19, and this one ended up getting to 18.5. Okay, so now that we have three different Pokemon, what does that mean in the overall um, rankings? And if you look at the if you look at the matchups, the answer is it matters, but not a ton, right? The difference between a Hundo and the 6, 14, 13 is only one match. And the difference between the Hundo and the absolute best is, well, two wins, but uh, there's also a couple ties here. Um, so you pick up in the, between the Hundo and the 6, you pick up Sandslash and Vigoroth, but you lose Skarmory. Uh, and then compared to the Hundo, compared to the 0, 14, 14, you're now losing Skarmory and Shadow Swampert, but you're also picking up... Um, you're picking up this other Swampert, Vigoroth, a Sand Slash, Dugong, and a Zoomerl. So that is where your bulk is coming into play. So does it make a difference? Yes. Does it make a substantial difference? No, right? So I'm not saying that like two wins and two ties is not inconsequential. Um, but if you look at the overall sort of stats of this thing, sort of 499 average is a decent average for a Hundo. 504, same thing, is a really good average for the six. Uh, not that far off from the 509 average you're seeing here. And overall, it's basically, yes, you'll flip some because of the bulk here, right? This hundo will help you flip the Azuma matchup. But overall, it's kind of like you're winning your, the matchups you're supposed to win. You're losing the matchups you're going to lose. Like, Cress is just going to grass knot you and take you down anyways. Um, even in some of these other matchups, like, you're going to see, like, the Crest and stuff like that. If you're going to lose to the if you're going to lose to the Jelson anyways... You might as well get off the slightly more damage with the attack heavy Pokemon than than a, a bulky Pokemon, right? So in the end, does it matter for like one and a half levels? Yes, it does. But is it super consequential? No. Um, so like 
I'm fine. I don't know if I'd do like a hundo, uh, but if you're looking at sort of in the, again, this is rank 118, which is pretty good. But if I have like a, you, you want to try and get these as close to 15 as possible. But if I had like an eight attack with like a 12 and like 10, something like that, I'm trying to make something that's not just, yeah. Right? An eight attack, 12 defense, 10 stamina. Still 18 and a half here. Um, let me get rid of this. Let me confirm that this is saved. Yeah, 8, 12, 10. Um, you're just looking at the two matchups, two win difference, right? Two win difference. Um, the, the bulkier one picks up again. The other Vigoras, Swampert, Dugong, Azumarill, but you're only you're losing Sableye and Shadow Swampert. So for if if you don't have the maximum stat product for Swampert, but you can 8, 12, 10, like that's not amazing. But if the difference is only two in the ending, is that big of is that much of a difference? I would argue no. I'd say it's more important just to have that Pokemon and using it as opposed to just like not having it on your roster. So for me personally, I would say Yes, ideally as close to Hundo, as close to perfect, it would be cool, but it's not a must, especially in these ranges where the difference in levels is like 0.51, 1.5. Where does it matter? And where it comes to matter is Hello Azumarill. So Azumarill, for those of you who don't know, um, before we before Excels, you had an Azumarill which was below level 40. So I think my first one was like a 10, 15, 15. 38 and a half, yeah. So my first one is a 10, 15, 15. Now it's a terrible rank, but that is what we had before, right? XLs were not a thing. So a bunch of us who've been playing since season ones have level 40 Sableyes, level 40 Azumarils, level 40 Metachamps with sort of like weird IVs here. So I'm just gonna put those IVs at a 10, 15, 15. I now have, I don't have a rank one, but I got a pretty close to rank one. I've got like a one, um, so the rank one is 0, 15, 15. I got like a one, maybe like a 1, 13, 15 or something like that. So I'm going to put in my, my 1, 13, 15, which is level 45. So now, hello, we are at a um, six and a half level difference between what is, I mean, I'll, I'll, max, you know, I'll maximize it for the rank one just to show the actual difference. But we are at a 45.5 here compared to a, 38.5 so that is a seven level difference now um and the difference in seven levels is only so it is only two here so you're thinking like what's the big difference here it's not the two that i'm worried about it's this overall average and where you're going to start seeing it more is in these games that you are um sort of losing you're you're not losing as bad in the majority of them right so let's just go to the front here um right we have a little little better loss on Claude sire about about even here about even here call that even two um look how much you picked it you still lose gelson but look how much you picked up on that gelson matchup those are basically all close together 70 here on the lantern but like that's it's, i guess 70 is not inconsequential I'm not talking about flip matchups there. I'm just talking about like the closeness of these matchups. So like superior, look at that. Like you went from losing at 106 to now losing at 356. Um, still getting killed there. And then it's getting so much crunch there, right? So it's it's these overall matchups. Like sure, a two is not inconsequential plus a tie, right? So there's like a three overall. Um, but it's just this overall average. And you see it in... Uh, I think you see it in other matchups as well. So like a Lickitung, um, ideal rank is an 8, 14, 15. Um, I guess I should not put I put the uh, non, non-top non one at the top here. So I'll put like a, let's say you only got like a hatch, 11. But the problem is like Lickitung is still going to get you to like level. I feel like Lickitung is going to matter even less. Like, let's just say you get a hatch at, like, level 10. It still goes up to 49. So you, you're not really seeing a huge difference. And, in fact, you may even see um, some break points where you actually might want slightly higher. Yeah, and, and this is exactly what I expected. Um, the 
9 attack with a 1 level less is actually picking up 2 matchups against the mirror match like a tongue, which makes sense because it's just CMP, and then Shadow Swamper. And this comes down to breakpoints, and I am not going to talk about breakpoints, uh, but breakpoints are essentially like um, there are certain attack stats and certain like a certain IV products, attack, defense, and stamina products that when you do the calculation, they actually come out and like flip certain matchups here. So go check out Ryan Swag. He does every single one of these, and and he's the reason that I built up my new Medi Slayer. Um, so I initially had a level a four attack, four attack Medi, five attack Medi, something stupid like that, and it got to like it was a best buddy level fifty one, and then he had a a Medi Slayer which was like a seven attack, um, seven attack fourteen whatever something like that, and I had it. And the difference was like three levels difference, but you actually picked up wins against like Lantern and I forget what the other couple were like like Glide maybe not Glygar, but like you picked up a couple wins having the better attack. So yes, ideally you would always want um, Hundos, but like again, this scenario shows the Hundo for Lickitung is not worth it because certain breakpoints will make it better for a higher attack stat. Um, so I'm trying to think of one where there's like a huge difference, um, in, let me look at the Great League rankings. Carbink, Carbink is probably one, like if, if you had a Carbink that was just like a hundo, if you had a hundo Carbink that is level 41 and a half, uh, as opposed to having a Carbink, which is, let's say maximized, um, 49 and a half only one that's again only one win and it's the mirror match it's it's funny because it's the mirror match that you actually win by having more bulk interesting so cmp not even coming into play here but again it's these overall averages i'm actually surprised that there's no matchups one here um considering the difference thing but it's again it's look at the difference of the average and it's 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 these matchups that you're losing that you're losing by like a lot less like the grass you're gonna lose to anyways but now now instead of losing to Venusaur and Vic, Shadow Vic like pretty decently like you're getting a little closer here um, it's the opposite for Trevenant uh, but look at look at that Skarmory matchup right Steel Wing is just gonna kill you now if you're a Hundo but like eh it's kind of close-ish there some of these like Polyrath and Quag like these are just terrible matchups but like. You get a few more there, right? So that's where it's really going to come in. It's it's being able to survive a lot of these other matchups. And again, these are just in like the one even even shield, even energy scenario. It's different if you're just like coming in and absorbing stuff too, right? Though That is where the bulk is going to help you there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other Pokemon. I did a zoom roll. Bastion is probably going to be similar. The thing is, like, there's not a ton in Sableye. So people always ask me, Sableye, I already kind of talked about Sableye. Um, can you use a Power Gem instead of Return? The answer is not really. Like, Return is just so, so much better. Um... And look at that, like the actual difference between a, ten, a Purified 10 Sableye versus a Hondo Sableye, you are actually losing, losing more matchups here by a significant amount, which is actually kind of shocking to me. Same stats, 10 attack, 43 and a half versus maximize IV, 48. Right, so we're looking at a four and a half level difference. In the four and a half level difference, you're actually just losing a bunch of um, points here overall. So in the Great League, um, it looks like for the majority of the Pokemon, IVs don't matter a ton. Uh, I think that, except for like these kind of weird cases like Sableye, I think the difference in like these level, these like five and a half 
level Pokemon when you're getting to like a zoom roll and carbink and stuff like that. I think you just see it more, maybe not in the matchups, but you see it more in the overall product of the Pokemon being able to stay in against like other bulky Pokemon or not other bulky Pokemon, just being able to stay in, in like matchups longer um, and get a little, maybe get like one more ice beam off, which like will make that, even if it's a losing matchup, it'll make it much, much closer. Um, in the Ultra League, the Ultra League, I feel like, I feel like the Ultra League maybe is more um, relevant. Um, I know Jellicent is one that I use all the time. So I have a Hundo. So Hundo is like, not a Hundo. I have like the best one, which is a 6, 14, 15. I'll do that second. Sorry. Let me do. Let me do, let's say, say you have a 12, 15, 15 gel scent, 46 and a half. Well, 46 and a half versus the level 50 is probably not. It's like three and a half level difference, which may affect some, but I don't think it's going to actually change a ton. No, only changes two Gyarados and a nine tail shadow. Uh, slightly better average, right? So I, I wanted to come on here and say, do IVs matter? They, I, I was going to say, yes, they do. But I'm starting to like think that, unless it's like very very obvious, I'm starting to think that they're starting to matter less. Um, when we go to the Ultra League, Polyrath. Let's just look at Polyrath because that's it's number. Um, so Polyrath, we'll just put in what is it at now? Yeah, I'll just put. I feel like once you like go below. 1412 versus a Polyrath with maximum stat products. Again, the attack stat one is actually better. Interesting. See, right? Interesting that you see right here. Two more wins for the higher attack stat. Um, one of them just being a mirror match, right? Which makes sense. But lower overall average. And it just comes down to again that bulk in the in the games like this, like talk stroke stuff like that, where it's just like you just stay in longer and are probably able to throw one more move there, which significant, which makes it so much better. So I think what I'm going to conclude with this is um, okay. So let me actually say, is there a rank checker? There's a hundred of them. I know a lot of people used um, Stadium Gaming before everyone hated them for what they did. Um, but basically what you would do is you just put in your Pokemon that you want to look up. There's like, um, and then you go down and you can see the different ranks and the different attack stat defense and stat pro and the overall stat product. Um, and then if you're looking for like a, something specific in the attack category or defense category, then you can like organize from there. But Ryan Swag does that as well. Um, so I think, I think with this, um, going back to this formula, I th yes, when it comes to like levels, I mean the the overall, if you want higher levels, um, level Pokemon lower down, you need a lower IV. That doesn't that lower attack IVs. That doesn't change. I think the conclusion should this should be. Do IVs matter overall? I think they do, but I don't think it's going to be for the reason that you may originally think. Just looking at all these different matchups, I think for I think there are some bulk Pokemon when they get like six or seven level difference that it will matter a ton, uh, where you're just going to pick up more matchups and more stuff like that. But I think like the difference of like a couple levels. The main way you're going to just see it is going to be in the overall, um, like the overall averages. And then some breakpoints, again, go check out Ryan Swags. We'll talk about like when it actually makes more sense to have a higher attack Pokemon because there's certain break breakpoints against certain matchups. Um, that. So that is, um, do IVs matter? I was actually like... It's funny, I'm now 24 minutes in the video. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised because when I did this originally, I feel like there was more 
difference in um, when I did this originally and I did the same analysis, I feel like the diff when there was like a, like four and a half, five levels difference, there was many more wins for that Pokemon compared to um, the one that was lower than that. But just running it now, it seems like there's not. And I don't know why. <laughs> um, you would think with like four or five level difference that there is going to be a thing. But again, I know, I know right off the bat you're like in most of those matchups not winning the mirror match, right? So if you are going into a mirror match and your opponent has a higher attack stat and they're going to win CMP, that's already like one loss that you need to make up. So really, just to get back to even, you need to flip one matchup. So if you're flipping like three matchups, so three on paper, like flipping three matchups is good, but when you're already behind one, you can only flip two net. Does that make a big difference? Eh, yes and no. So for me, uh, what, what's my strategy? Might as well talk about my strategy here. I've always been... I don't I don't need the I don't need the rank one. I don't even need like the rank ten or twenty. I'm really all about um for me it's mostly about the actual Pokemon as opposed to the uh ideal IVs. For me it's always like I would rather have a non ideal Swampert and have it on my roster than have the rank one because i feel like swampert is just like one of the best and it's kind of like that for a lot of the pokemon and like same with me i have like a i built up a skeledurge to just test it out and it has like a what is it like six or seven attack and like a 10 12 back line and it's like it's killing for me and so don't let don't let non-optimal iv scare you from building up pokemon i think that's going to be my conclusion don't let don't let non-optimal ivs scare you from building a pokemon um if you only let but let for these xl pokemon like skeleton is easy because it's just like it was a low dust investment low x low candy investments but some of these pokemon like medis um sableyes lickitungs these are not low investments i think with those i'd probably be a little more picky but with those pokemon i if I were doing this now, quite honestly, I wouldn't just be running. I would not be looking for rank ones of those across the board. If I was doing those now, I would do way more in-depth research on breakpoints. Like with Ryan Swag and, and PV Poke has a breakpoints. Um, like, uh, let me see if I can bring this up here. Like PV Poke has a breakpoints section here uh in this where was this matrix right so where's the breakpoints right so here is um here are some let me actually let me just go back to the great league oh you know what i i wonder if if this is messing up because uh pv poke does this sometime let me just let me run this analysis again uh people may have already gone because it still keeps in because when you just move from um greatly to ultra league there's sometimes it messes up with um keeping in the stats of the great league oh no here we go. This is this is brand new and it's the same thing. Okay, that's good. Um, but these breakpoints talk about um, talk about sorry the different. I'm pretty sure it's the different attack stats and that you need to um, flip matchups. But Ryan Swag. Again, I'm just going to go say, go check out Ryan Sway because he has a full in-depth analysis because, like I said, when it comes back to this formula, when it comes back to this formula here, different attack, different IV attack, IV defense, and IV stamina in this formula spit out different stat products for your base defense, your base stamina um, when we go to 
when you go to the um, here on uh, like PV poke here or not PV poke on stadium gain here, like attack defense stamina. You see these overall stat product, like to get your overall stat product. Changing the attack, as you can see here, just like a 10 10 10 versus like a hundo, like changes the attack, the stat defense, and stamina. So there are certain matchups, there's certain, like he'll give you break points saying like, if you want, um, I'll give you an example, because his Medi Slayer is like a seven attack. Don't quote me exactly, but it's something like this. And so it's like the Medi Slayer with a seven attack um, gets you a certain break point at this sort of like attack and defense combo here right because you're look what you're giving up you're giving up like one defense for two plus attack and i know you're giving up some stamina there too but like there's certain like break points there anyways i'm not even gonna try and explain it go go check out his bit his uh channel anyways that is it hope that was helpful <laughs> i hope it didn't confuse you i hope i hope if you learned anything from this it was how it's calculated um how it's calculated how it affects the the um, levels and how difference in levels can flip some matchups and if it doesn't flip matchups how it will affect the overall uh, averages of a game because realistically difference in six to seven levels could allow you to live long enough to get one more charge move off which takes those like bad matchups where you're losing like two three hundred to like a 425 which is significant so even though it's still a loss on paper i think in practice it makes a big difference and those are my final thoughts on that anyways that is it thanks for watching see you guys on the next one